here is i i have taken one marm that is adipati marm is situated intracranial by joining veins and pore and the joint so here veins are involved suture joint is involved and the point is that is the center part of the top hair pattern of the body so i did one thing i i took 50 cadavers in lucknow with the collaboration of uh, professor and head kgmu kg medical college professor ac das and he suggested that you take the dead bodies you wash clean the hair with soap and water so that the natural pattern may arise and then you cut 1.5 cm hair so that by that way you may obtain the natural uh, weld formation here the weld formation is showing here so in this uh, marb study what was the lacuna due to lack of evidence and documentation there are diversified views regarding its structure and location so you if you go through the literature you will find that somebody says that it is a confluence of sinus shringata kayan all that uh, the um, uh, the occipital region situation so that was the lacuna in the knowledge so ayurvedic parameters for verification that is aptodesh you know the praman then the anuman praman pratyaksha praman there are three which i used the three pramanas one is the classical or textual view anuman is the uh, circum uh, circumstantial evidence or view and the pratyaksha praman the naked eye view my that is micro or macro material of study total 50 freshly prepared cadavers 48 males and two females 40 bodies from kgmc lucknow up india 10 bodies from shc lucknow up india then the method the scalp hair of all bodies were trimmed to 2.5 cm long the hair were shampooed washed and dried to obtain natural architect and texture of the hair and loma worth world of hair loma worth laid down in uh, ayurvedic books so i took that point that loma worth should be identified so first of identification of this marm adipat marm is the loma worth so i found out that world formation which is uh, being seen here so that way i Uh, uh, searched out loma worth that is on the top of the head then a rod and trefined i took a rod and that was trefined through the substance of the skull from center of the loma worth loma worth we pierce here it is seen here and the rod perpendicular to the surface of the so that other structure may not be damaged so i i uh, cared that surface that rod should be perpendicular to the surface of the skull the scalp was removed and cranium was cut through the, to dissect out the structures observations after removing the scalp the trepanation rod in every instance pierced through the point on sagittal suture intersected by an imaginary line drawn passing two parietal imaginary foramen or where the single so when that scalp was peeled out it is visible here that there are two parietal imaginary foramen and the rod pierced through this which is shown in a previous slide 
so there is in anthropology because in anatomy this point is not laid down neither in grave anatomy or in any book of anatomy but in anthropology they have mentioned this point and this point is known as the obelian they have mentioned this point as the oblia and they say that there are two parietal imaginary foramen if you draw imag- imaginary line crossing through these two parietal imaginary the intersecting point is the oblian point this is the definition from anthropology books what happens sometime this one parietal imaginary foramen is missing so that way you may draw a perpendicular line to the interparietal suture and the again the perpendicular uh, crossing the this interparietal suture that point is oblian point but there is one more thing suppose all the two parietal imaginary foramen they are missing then the they say the suture which is simplest it is visible here the suture is simplest that is also a oblian point so three criteria one when all the two parietal imaginary foramen they are present second one parietal imaginary foramen absent and in third when all the two parietal imaginary foramen absent in all these three conditions this oblian point can be searched out this is the finding and our that defining rod that peers always through this which is not visible here but here it is visible you see here exactly at that point <clears throat> the average distance between the two parietal foramina was measured and that was 1.26 average 1.26 cm so the praman it is given you can measure through that the same praman which sushut has mentioned is measured here now how i can say that it is a fatal point the thing the third point of the sushut that is a sadya pranarma so how it is fatal how it becomes here two parietal imaginary foramen and the interparietal suture interparietal suture so the cases they are reported because the short of time i would not like to mention all these cases i wanted to place here but because of the time i may discuss here the possibilities if there is a strike on whether it is sharp through the shark uh, cutting wound or it is a blunt injury in all two cases the chances are that this parietal imaginary foramen is ruptured and if it is ruptured then the this parietal imaginary foramen is communicated to the superior central sinus so there is a chance that that hemorrhage may with infection enter the superior central sinus and that condition is a very fatal condition known as superior central sinus thrombosis which is a very fatal everybody knows who who knows surgery may assess this this thing so this is why and what happens in this case we are the superior uh, where the parietal imaginary foramen they are injured but in that case where the all these two parietal imaginary foramen how then how would you explain that uh, fatality so here this is the simplest suture so the if the strike is hard so there is every chance that the separation of the suture because of being a simplest here and when the suture is separated out what happens you know that the dura mater 
is continued over the uh, scalp known as a pericranium so that continuity will be separated and there again will be a rupture of the superior sacral sinus because you know the floor of the superior sacral sinus is formed by the scalp so when the scalp is separated there will be every chance of rupture of the superior sacral sinus again the same condition uh, the fatal condition so i would like to say <coughs> to conclude upon that the the point which is known as the adipati bindu i would call it though sushrut has not mentioned adipati bindu sushrut mentions adipati marm but i call it adipati bindu just because of the obelian point which has been mentioned by anthropology so this adipati bindu the weld formation identification of the marm then the uh, joint bony joint and veins only you have got three conditions to identify the adipati marm and all the three conditions they are existing here so we can say that this point obelian point may be called as the adipati bindu or adipati marm number 1 number 2 there is there is a specific observation out of 50 cases one case was found yes usually what happens that superior sacral sinus turns to right side forming the transverse sinus that is the right transverse sinus sometime what happens gray's anatomy says that sometime these superior sacral sinus turns to left side forming the left transverse sinus so i found one case though i cannot say definitely but in that case where the will formation two types clockwise anti clockwise so the anti clockwise will formation i found one case and in that particular case that superior sacral sinus turns to left side which has not been mentioned by any book of anatomy or surgery so that way what is the advantage of adipati marm one is i know that the adipati marm is very important uh, bindu we should care it while doing surgery or while trauma the second is sub do the sample is very small one case is negligible but if we find many cases of this type so we can outside we can diagnose that if the weld formation is anti clockwise that means the superior sacral sinus probably in most of the cases will turn to left side forming the left transverse sinus this is the advantage of the study of this uh, adipati marm so i would like to say thank you very much for giving patient hearing this is all about the adipati marm next time whenever i'll meet i'll like to say something more about the marm so having a very short time i can conclude only this much i think you must you will be satisfied with this or if any query about this thing you are free to ask so uh, very thank you sir for such a nice and elaborate description about the pratipan and it is a great privilege for us that you, we are a, a, a got an opportunity to interact with you and hear such a uh, wonderful uh, uh, delivery the house is open for any questions and uh, uh, sir will be uh, more than happy to answer your queries if if there are any any query thank uh, you is, uh, there is no thank you thank you very so much from the, uh, from this uh, podium i uh, extend my sincere thanks 
and uh, heartfelt gratitude sir that you have uh, taken out uh, your precious time and uh, uh, delivered such a uh, eventful talk and certainly it is one of the most important finding that we are up to know and still we will be pursuing the same in our in our future courses thank you sir for guiding us and enlightening us about the adipati thank, thank you thank you sir.